Cats are both adored and hated by many. Cats are the subject of legend and a favorite subject for artists and writers. There are 600 million cats in the world. Cats even have their own hashtag on Instagram. Come take a walk with me. Let's go back in time. The Egyptians favored cats because they employed them as mouse catchers, protecting their crops and stopping diseases from spreading among the people. They were considered good luck, bringing prosperity to the land. So cats were elevated into godlike status in the land of Egypt, and laws were passed making it a crime to kill a cat or to export cats from the country. Killing a cat was punishable by death. Cats became an object of worship in Egypt. Pharaohs were commonly buried with their cats. Archaeologists discovered hieroglyphics, pictures, and carvings of cats wearing expensive jewelry or taking up prominent positions, which demonstrates cats' importance to this ancient civilization. When cats died in this era, they were mummified and buried with an ample supply of mummified mice for the afterlife. A sanctified plot was discovered containing 300,000 mummified cats. Knowing the attitude of the Egyptians toward their cats, the Persian army carried cats with them to battle against the Egyptians. They knew the Egyptian archers would not fire at them, risking the head of the precious felines. It was the Romans and the Greeks who first introduced the cat as a domestic animal. The darkest time for cats was during the medieval period, also called the Dark Ages. Because cats were thought to be in league with the devil, containing magical powers and strongly associated with witchcraft, the 17th century became a witch-burning era. Anyone who kept a cat was thought to be a witch, so they would kill the supposed witch and her familiar, particularly black cats. They would put the cats in baskets and burn them alongside the witch or some other violent form of death. <laughs> Ding dong bell. Hello, I'm Mother Goose and I'm going to read you some poems. The first one is Ding dong bell. Ding dong bell, pussy's in the well. Who put her in? Little Johnny Thin. Who pulled her out? Little Tommy Stout. What a naughty boy was that to drown a pussy cat. Ding Dong Bell was such a poem written during this dark period when cats were hated, feared, and warded off. Cats were treated badly driven out of towns and villages because of the superstition against them. The medieval period was filled with all sorts of superstitions. For example, if a woman knew things about the healing powers of certain herbs and plants and perhaps mixed potions for health benefits, it was thought that she was making magical potions. Prior to the Dark Ages, people would often visit these women seeking healing remedies or love potions, which was considered white magic and perfectly acceptable. One superstition was that if a black cat jumped over a dead body, the corpse would become a vampire. Cats are nocturnal. They roam at night, 
So for this reason, they were distrusted and thought to be supernatural servants of witches, aiding in the witch's craft of black magic. Some even believed witches could turn themselves into these magical, mysterious black cats. And when the cat was not home, it was believed the witch had turned herself into the cat. Millions of felines were killed in bonfires, hung, or tortured. In hindsight, people now admit that countless numbers of lives could have been saved if it were not for the suspicion against cats being the devil's pet. The witch burning frenzy that happened during the Dark Ages can be blamed on the church. The Protestants were growing in numbers, pulling the congregants away from the Catholic Church. Around the same time, Lutheranism was beginning, which created even more competition for worshipers. What greater way to prove the church had power over the dark powers of Satan than to boast about the number of witches exterminated? The tragedy is that many of those supposed witches were likely not even witches at all but innocent victims of superstition. The country of Germany had the highest number of witch executions, followed by Sweden. Often, the women accused were haggard, haggardly looking old ladies, therefore giving rise to the concept of witches being creepy old, decrepit ladies with warts and long crooked noses. But not all witches looked the same. Some could be young, some could be beautiful but women were most likely to be thought to be a witch, as only 20% of the witches executed were men. Often, women would be targeted or accused of being a witch just because she didn't follow the commonly accepted thought of everyone else. She was considered different, not like everybody else. Talk about bullying. We cannot make everyone fit into the same mold that kind of thinking is not good for civilized society. We need to embrace the diversity. The cat population became almost extinct in Europe while the bubonic plague was spreading. The bubonic plague, also called the Black Death, it spread throughout Europe, wiping out one third of Europe's population and spread to areas where pests and fleas were rife killed between 75 to 200 million people, which is the worst pandemic the world has ever seen to date. One of folklore's most familiar rhymes that many of us remember from our childhoods, Ring Around the Rosy, tells a story about tragic times in civilization's past. Ring Around the Rosy. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Usually accepted story behind this rhyme is that it was written about the Black Plague, where symptoms included circles around the eyes or sores accompanying the plague also were circled by a red rash that is the first symptom of the disease. Those sores would eventually turn black, hence the name black death pocket full of posies the practice of carrying flowers and placing them around the infected person for protection is described in the phrase a pocket full of posies one of the superstitious ways used by people in the middle ages to try and fend off the plague was to stuff their pockets with posies birmingham historical society has a book titled pretty posy powerful healing and herbal primer sold on Amazon. So it turns out that posies as well as other herbs and flowers have medicinal healing qualities and that it's not superstition at all. Now ashes ashes um, some poems it's at a shoe at a shoe which sounds like a chew we all fall down goes the song ashes is a corruption or a imitation of the sneezing sound made by the infected person. Sneezing was also an early sign of the plague. 
or the line ashes ashes could be about the burning of the bodies we all fall down quite literally referring to so many people falling down dead during the middle ages they cremated the bodies to help stop the spreading of the disease two of the more well-known plagues that devastated europe area in the middle ages were the black death in the years 1347 to, to 1350 and the great london plague of 1665 rhymes and songs were a way of common folk to tell stories to each other and a way of carrying those stories over to succeeding generations. But one of the puzzling pieces of information regarding this rhyme is that its first known recognized date of existence was in the early 1800s, 1880s. That's 215 years after the London Plague and over 530 years after the Black Death. Such time differences doesn't mean in and of themselves that the story wasn't told about these plagues until hundreds of years later. It may just mean that this particular rhyme about the plague wasn't written until long after the event, or perhaps it was written much earlier, but it wasn't considered appropriate to say. So it may have gone dormant until the 1880s when the terribleness of the plague was much forgotten and the rhyme could resurface. We may never know for sure. We can conclude that the silly superstition of cats contributed to the spread of the plague because there were not enough cats to control the rodent population from which the flea population spread the disease. For centuries, people in England believed that cats stole the breath of babies. Nobody ever truly likes having to see a doctor. But how would you like it if your doctor looked like this? He looked scary to me. It was common during the Black Plague for doctors to wear beak-shaped masks. Usually they were made of leather or some natural material containing goggles or glasses at the eyes. Sometimes it was a whole hood coming down to the shoulders. They wore a hat and a long trench coat to the floor and boots, so they were basically masked from head to toe in order to protect them from the Black Plague, or so they believed. <laughs> this outfit has become an iconic image of the Black Plague. Another superstition is that if a black cat walked across your path, it would bring you bad luck. I suppose that if I lived back during the medieval times, I might be thought of as a witch myself. I do not like to follow the common thought as everyone around me. I like to research, dig deep, and learn new things. I believe in the power of our bodies as God designed them, with the power to heal itself if given the proper nutrition and tools. I am totally open to the idea of using herbs and plants and essential oils for medicinal health. And I love cats, and currently I have six black cats in my care. Another silly legend about cats is that if you step on a cat's tail, you won't get married that year. So we have seen how both the witch and the black cats were victims both accused of many things that may not be true. They were slandered, hated, accused of having magical powers, involved in the devil's black magic, doing witchcraft, and burned at the stake, all to no fault of their own. The real villain in all this history is man's silly superstition gone wild that cats stopped being seen as doing the devil's work and were once again in people's good graces all over Europe. Pussycat Pussycat, written in 1853. Pussycat Pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to visit the Queen. Pussycat 
pussycat. What did you there? I frightened a little mouse under the chair. Pussycat, pussycat. Was this song written to help change people's attitudes toward cats? If the queen had a cat, then it would be acceptable for the common folks to adopt cats as well. Cats were given the job on ships as rodent catchers. It is believed that Christopher Columbus brought cats with him to America. In particular, the British short hair, which is rumored to be the ancestor of today's very popular American short hair. The early American farmers saw the value in having cats around to get rid of the rodents which protected their crops. Abraham Lincoln is the first president to take cats to the White House. By the 18th century, the witch hunts eventually ceased and attitudes toward cats shifted, making the cats a domestic household pet. By the late 1800s, some long-haired distinctive breeds were established and cat shows were being held. This was followed by the 19th century, the golden Victorian age. So it appears to me that as society accepted and adopted the cat, the more civilized society became. Hmm, I wonder, did the cats change us? Some animal shelters refuse to allow the adoption of black cats around Halloween for fear of some awful ritual being the final destination for the poor cats. We have found the animal shelters around us have too many black cats and so would not take our cats at this time. Black cats tend to have a low adoption rate because of the superstitions and stigmas about black cats. National Black Cat Day was established on October 27 to help eliminate the stigma by celebrating the beauty of these sleek creatures. Don't be superstitious. The black cat mysterious myths have ruined the reputations of black cats which come out of man's silly superstitions and do not come from the cats themselves. Black cats deserve loving homes just as well as any other cat. I currently have six black cats. Some of my favorite cats have been black, and I am not a witch. In summary, cats have an interesting and diverse history, being both revered as gods, good luck charms, as well as being associated with disease and witchcraft, doing the devil's work. People say dogs, are man's best friend, and they do love to please their master. But cats want their masters to serve them, and the cats rule the home. Perhaps they do. My activities are often interrupted by a cat wanting a petting. I love the quiet nature of cats, and I'm so glad they don't bark or chase cars. Don't be afraid of black cats. They are no different than any other cat. They are just lovable, playful, furry creatures that want a place to call home. And in return, they will help control the rodent population. I love little pussy. I love little pussy. Her coat is so warm. And if I don't hurt her, she'll do me no harm. So I'll not pull her tail or ride her away, but Pussy and I together will play. She will sit by my side and I'll give her some food and she'll like me because I'm gentle and good.